Hey folks, welcome back to the Portable Gamer. Welcome back to American Truck Simulator and welcome to Eli Nevada. Nevada, I do that all the time. I should know better. Nevada, they really don't like it when you screw that up. So here we are in our 579 and we are going to pick up a job. It's going to be probably the first of two parts or maybe we'll just do the first part on camera and I'll finish off camera. I don't know, but we're going to pick up a tanker at Texaco, the refinery. There we go. And we're going to take it down to somewhere in Arizona, San Simon, I want to say. Yeah. So let's get out of here and uh, and let's talk about gaming. It's been, it's always an interesting week for me. You know that. It's been an interesting gaming week for me. And we'll get on the road and I'll tell you what's going on. There we go. Now, I have to say, my my muscle memory for uh, for my controller, well, it, everything is going to tie in soon enough, but man, you really, you really don't think, when you binge a game, you really don't necessarily, or maybe you do, I don't know, I don't, I don't necessarily, like, appreciate the the muscle memories that we're forming when we play a game a lot. You know, when we kind of binge it a little bit, particularly when it's kind of an intense game. You know, I'm very much into simulation gaming, and it's very, I find it very relaxing, obviously. It's very chill. And I think the, the content on the channel is, is always going to be sim gaming. But I did... And that, that's where I've been the past few days. That's why I didn't record any farm videos this week. I've been absolutely binging on the division. Binging on the division. Did I say that right? Did I say division? I may have. And me talk funny sometimes. I've been absolutely binging on the division. And it's a pretty intense game. It is, I think, by any measurement, it is pretty intense, and particularly compared to simulation gaming, which is so, so relaxing, then it, it is definitely intense. So I have uh, I've formed some muscle memories just in the past week, and I'm struggling just a bit to drive this truck properly, which is weird because you would think as long as I've been driving these sim trucks you would think that muscle memory would like overwrite the other one and I'm sure in time you know maybe they'll all even out but at the moment yeah I'm feeling like a bit of a grom which is uh, it's par for the course I always feel like a bit of a grom that's just me I'm uh you know I have a good time I really <laughs> I enjoy myself but I'm not claiming to be, like, super good at these games. Man, I'll tell you something else that's weird. Uh, the Division is definitely a next-gen game. And going from that to this, you know I love Truck Sim. You know I do. and I, I, The only thing that really frustrates me about this game is the AI. Other than that, I think it's just about perfect. But, man... It is definitely a transition to go from those uh, next-gen Ubisoft graphics to these SCS graphics. But you know what? It's, you know, we st that expression, it's all good. It really is. It's all good. It's, uh, you know, it is what it is. Now, I can tell you that one of the things that fascinates me about the division visually surprised I got through that combination of words come on don't oh yeah don't give me a ticket I'm trying to not drive like a like I'm driving a two-door Honda one of the things that amazes me about the division is it takes place in New York City after a pandemic and there's just the whole city is just blown up. It's just wrecked. Not literally blown up like with a bomb. I mean, blown up like the way your house looks after a party. And uh, the amount of clutter and detail and just junk everywhere. And it's 
astounding. You know, and I'm not suggesting that there would need to be that level of clutter here in Eli, Nevada. But it amazes me that the game runs as fast as it does and looks as good as it does on my Wii laptop. Because I, I mean, it's a gaming laptop, but it's by no means a powerhouse. I'm surprised the game played at all. In fact, that was one of the reasons that I didn't get it for so long, is I didn't think it would play on my machine. It plays just fine. It looks really, really good. So I have to say, though, having been immersed in those graphics, and uh, and when I say that, you got to understand, I'm not like I'm not smack talking the the American Truck Simulator. I really do love it. You know that, but it is. Uh, it's different, man. It's really different. The economy of code writing, the efficiency that you're looking for, is like the holy grail to developers. An economy of code. I Years ago, I worked for... Uh, well, I can't really be specific about what the company did. It's not like top secret or anything. It's just I'm under an NDA. And uh, we had hired some external code writers. My boss was a code writer. And, and this was a few years ago, so it was PHP, which will tell you how, how long ago it was. But it was PHP. We needed some PHP written. And he had contracted with some code writers. And you know, a few days later, the guy brings this code in, and it's like 2,500 lines. My boss had a fit. And he said, I hired you and I paid you to do this because I didn't have time to do it myself. But I'll do it myself. And in an hour, he had, he had written something to do the same thing. And it was like 80 lines. So economy of code is, that's a real thing. Uh, and this is what we're taking. We are taking this to San Simon. Do you want to... Uh, you want to get fancy or you just want to haul what they give us? You know what? We always get fancy. Let's just take what they give us instead of getting fancy. So economy of code is, that's a real thing. And the more efficient your code is, the more compact it is, the faster it can run and the more things it can do. And that's, right, that's the, that's what efficiency is all about. You can either do the same stuff with less resources or using the same resources, you can get a bigger result. And I look at something like Spin Tires. The original Spin Tires, I think it was like one gig, was it not? It was a tiny little app. And it had you know, persistent terrain deformation. Where is this thing? There it is. Persistent terrain deformation. And the graphics were, I think really, really good. They had that soft, kind of foggy look to them. Very, um, very moody and atmospheric. I love it. Let's get this thing backed in here. Is that about right? Yeah, it's about right. Mm, let's see how we did. So, I think for Ubisoft, now granted, Ubisoft has probably thousands of associates working at dozens of locations and SCS is a much smaller operation. Did we miss it? Hmm. I guess we did. I mean clearly we did, but I thought we thought we had it. Alright, we'll take another crack at it. Get in there. That time we got it. Okay. I'm at a different desk, by the way. I'm at the same Air Airbnb I've been at for a minute, but I'm at a different desk than the last time I smacked my knuckles on it. And I smacked my knuckles on this one too. It's when I reach up to get my uh, T key. So 877 miles, yeah, we will not do this in one episode. And I just saw we do have a tiny GPS. So we'll use that one instead of the mini map. So I guess what I'm saying is the more money you have and the more resources you have and the bigger your staff is, I think, I don't want to say you just fix a, mon fix a problem by throwing money at it, but you sort of do, you know, you'll, you'll hear people say that as you travel through life. You can't fix a problem by throwing money at it. Yeah, actually you can. It's one of the best ways to fix a problem because you're not actually throwing money at it. 
you're throwing resources at it and resources cost money. So yeah, that, that's actually exactly how you solve a problem. You throw money at it. So I'm sure if SCS had uh, a staff of, of 800, their code would, would probably be more efficient than it is and maybe they could fit better graphics in for the same, the same hit to your CPU and GPU. Does that make sense? So I guess what I'm saying is the, be the better your, the bigger your budget is, the better your, your resources are, the better your code writers are, and the more efficient your code is. So who knows what Pavel and SCS could do with the graphics in this game if they had, if they had those resources, but they don't. It's different, you know, but, but anyway. I'm not like tripping out about it. I'm just, you know how it is. We, we, we drive a truck, we talk about gaming. So I've been binging The Division. Why you been doing that, Will? Well, there's a couple of reasons. And I will tell you as soon as I pull us out onto the highway. All right, so there's that. I think we're okay on fuel. All right, there's a gap. Yep, half tank fuel, at least enough to get us through this episode. I might fill up off camera. So, so why have you been binging The Division? Well, uh, there's a couple reasons. One reason is it's an effing fantastic game. Not at all what I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a tactical shooter. It's really not. It's probably 80% RPG, 20% tactical shooter. It's not, it's not very tactical. It's... Uh, it's an RPG. It's, you know, it's leveling up and, and collecting loot and boss fights. And it's fine. It's just not, not what I expected. It's really not. I got it on sale right after Christmas. It was 85% off, which was astounding. And it was, it was too good to pass up at that point. So I went ahead and got it. And, uh, and then just a few weeks later, now basically, something called the global event started and the global event is uh, it opens up some unique levels for a period of seven days and during those seven days the loot drops if you know rpgs then you know about loot drops and oh loot drops and probability and rngs and that sort of thing but the loot drops are modified so that this very desirable and really extremely rare gear can be farmed. Normally in regular gameplay it can just be found and it drops very very rarely. But during this global event week you can farm it which is what I've been doing. And it really got me thinking you know I truly believe a, a, a very smart person told me this and I absolutely agree with it and I keep it close to my heart. It is 100% true. You can learn from anything. There's no situation, there's no event, there's no uh, observation or piece of news or, or anything that you cannot, if you choose to, that you can't unpack and learn from. You can learn from anything, man. You can just learn your way all through life. And a lot of people don't. They just and they don't have time for it. They're just not interested. They, they care less about learning and figuring stuff out. They just, you know. But some people, they always want to be learning. They always want to be figuring things out. So I'm playing this, this game. And it's just a sidebar here. If you're new to the channel, you may not know this. But I was away from gaming for a long, long time. I just got back into it seriously eh, about a year ago, year and a half ago. But in, a, in an RPG game, I guess RPG game is a bit redundant. In an RPG, it's, uh, I'm, I'm searching for words right now. I'm trying to be very careful with my words. It's like if you're not OCD, an RPG game will make you OCD because there's always another reward 
right around the corner. It doesn't matter what you just got. It's like every time you get a piece of gear that you've really been trying to hunt down, the game somehow drops something else that then now puts you on the path to the next piece of gear. And I don't want to say it's designed to like addict you to the game. I think obviously it's designed to make the game fun, but it's also designed to make you play it in the same way that slot machines. It's like you always almost won. And the thing about slot machines is, you know, our intellectual mind can recognize when you play a slot machine, you either won or you didn't win. You know, there's no there's no almost one. But the way the screens come up, it gives you a feeling that you almost won. You didn't. You didn't almost win. You lost. But you almost won. So you give it one more try. We'll try it one more time because look how close I was. And that's, you know, that's Vegas, baby. So I feel like RPG game developers kind of do the same thing. I'm totally cool with that. I'm totally cool with that. I am OCD. And I think those two things are sort of working together to really push me to try to max out some of this gear during this week while I can because really in this week I can I can get like months of grinding and farming done. So that's sort of what I've been after and it, it got me thinking about gaming in general and how so much gaming now involves a, not just a reward component but the reward component is that we can sort of make things our own not in the sense that we possess them but in the sense that we personalize them and in that way it's really no different than truck simulator either ATS or ETS in that you start with very basic equipment and one of the goals is not just to get better equipment you know oh totally missed my turn right there all right well you know what we're gonna do a two-parter anyway so let's just keep rolling and I said yeah here's another turn down here okay that's on me so you start with very basic equipment and then you level it up and you don't just level it up to be more powerful like in a generic sense you want to make it your own right so things like the paint job packs and the wheel packs or if you make your own skins you know you're making you're making things the way you want to make them and that that's going to tie in with something else that I want to talk about today but but I think game developers have kind of uh, not struck gold but I think they've really tapped into something particularly in in western culture that we're very, uh, and I don't mean this in a bad way when I say this, I don't mean it in a bad way, but we're really particular now. You know, we've become not spoiled, but we're very particular. We like things a certain way. We like things just so. And that's, I don't think that's either good or bad. It's just a fact. But we really like things just so. And in gaming now, that's one of the things that you do is you you personalize your gear. You, know, you buy the trucks that you want, set them up the way that you want. And that, I think, is what drives loot collecting and leveling up in some of these games. It's not just being able to do bigger and better things. So in Truck Sim, as an example, you start with a basic truck. You can't necessarily haul heavy cargo with that. It doesn't have a powerful enough motor. Well, the game could generically put you into a truck with a bigger motor, and now you can haul those cargos, right? That's what you were after. No, not exactly. I want a specific engine from a specific manufacturer, and then I want it to make a specific exhaust sound, right? We really want to personalize things. And that is in something like The Division, where you personalize everything. Uh, my character, it's, it looks like me, 
you know. And I do that same thing in, I'm not going to miss my turn this time. I do that same thing in uh, in any race sim that lets you build a character. I mean, most race sims let you, you pick your own number and that sort of thing. But there's some sims that let you actually like build the appearance of your character. And I do, and I, I make it look like me. And that's, moment please. I think that's part of the appeal. Making a big swing here so I don't hit that cop. That's part of the appeal. And I think it's also, uh, that definitely leads into the second thing that I wanted to talk about, which is like how people approach gaming. Because I've been, in order to, to level up faster and farm faster, I've been doing co-op. And I, I can tell you my first observation about playing multiplayer and co-op, at least in the division, is the, the old days of, of kids screaming obscenities on Xbox chat, that seems to be, for the most part, gone. You know, it'll be a group of four, and we're doing our thing, and maybe 15 or 20 minutes into the mission, somebody will say something, and then that's it. It, do, it doesn't begin a conversation. It's not like everybody opens up at that point and we all start like planning and, and whatever. The conversation is very, very minimal. And that's really a contrast. Now, I, I haven't, obviously, I don't play Fortnite. I have no plans to. I don't play PUBG or anything. So I don't know what group chat is like on those types of games. It may be exactly like the bad old days of, of Xbox chat. But... But for the most part, it seems to have, like, that wave has crested, thankfully. Because that was one of the things that sort of drove me away from gaming was trying to play multiplayer and just, it's just too many people to mute. you got to mute everybody. can't stand it. So it, you're a group of four, and, uh, and you do these, these missions together. And they are, uh, I mean, I've been doing... There's, there are certain missions that you can do faster than others, so obviously those are the ones that people are gravitating to this week, and we're just farming them, just grinding them out, like doing them over and over. And after a while, you begin to recognize that there's like a specific pattern, you know, there's specific places in a room where you walk, and that triggers a, a boss to drop, or you know, go here, and that causes you know a checkpoint to be reached or something. And it gets a little, not repetitious, but you can tell you're playing with people that also know where all those locations are and so it it becomes you know sort of anticipatory where i don't know if it could ever be completely random and i don't know that we would ever want it to be you know if you were if you were doing a mission and the the challenges were completely randomized every time i think that might be a little in some ways hard to deal with because we don't have like full, full sensory input when we're gaming. It's getting close, but situational awareness and being able to like look around, even in a VR headset, it's just not, not quite like real life. So I don't know that you would ever want it to be completely random. That might be a little too hard, but this is not random at all. It's it's pretty, pretty repetitive in that way. So what I've been observing is how people handle that and how people approach these events that play out the same every time you run that mission. And it got me thinking about sim gaming. And it got me thinking about what, like the different approaches that people have to gaming. And something that, I, that I've noticed about the players on The Division is it seems like a lot of them they're really not very into or they don't seem to be into the content of the game that they're actually playing it's just the game itself if that makes sense and what I mean by that is 
Like right now, I'm obviously not driving a truck, but I'm trying to be a good truck driver. I, I am simulating within the, within the limitations of the, of the game, I am simulating driving a truck and I want to do everything within reason. Again, within reason, I want to do everything that a real truck driver would do. I'm not pretending to be a truck driver. I'm playing a truck driving game. But I'm sort of pretending to be a truck driver. And for me, I mean, I thought that's what gaming was. When I play farm sim, when I play flight sim, I'm not pretending to be a pilot, but I am doing my very best to fly realistically, to fly as well as possible in a realistic simulator. And in race sims, I think that's maybe the the highest evolution of that because race sims are so good now that you put on a VR headset and you've got pro drivers, like actual race drivers, using race sim to learn tracks. So, so I'm not pretending to be a truck driver, but I sort of am. And when I play The Division, I'm not pretending to be a super secret agent, but I sort of am. And I realized uh, essentially what happened is somebody made a comment as we were playing it's kind of a kind of a d-bag comment but whatever I don't know you you don't know me it's not a it's not a big deal I wasn't upset about it but what struck me was we're playing this game completely differently like I'm trying to play realistically and use effective small unit tactics and I think other people they could care less about any of that stuff they're just they're just playing a game you know what I mean they're not simulating anything they're just playing a game and that kind of uh, I mean it's not good or bad it's just an observation but I thought yeah there's I think there there are different ways to approach this and I guess the other thing that was kind of maybe off-putting about that comment was it was said almost with like contempt, you know, the, that why would anybody pretend they're actually doing something when they're playing a game? And that, that kind of got me thinking because I was like, yeah, why would they? You know, and I'm not saying that that it's a bad thing if they do or if I do. But why would you get that into a game? Why? What, what is it that you're doing? And so that led me to, to sort of think about or reflect on the fact that games are an escape. I mean, obviously, hopefully, we all know where we really are and, and we're not like detaching ourselves from reality. But I think there is definitely an escapist aspect to gaming as it gets more and more realistic, as it gets better and better. I think there really is uh, a, an escapist aspect to it. And, you know, when you read about the possibility that all reality is simulated and that none of this is really happening, then you get into this weird feedback loop where it's like, yeah, but if that's not happening, then that's also not happening, which means none of this is not happening. It's, it's like the matrix, but for real without the Agent Smith and the whole deal. But if, if you check out like the making of The Matrix, the producers gave the cast uh, an obscure French book on the possibility or the, the inevitability of simulated reality. And I mean, you can take it as far as you want. You can read as deep as you want into it. But the fact is that everything that we think think we know comes from two places. It comes from inside our own mind and it comes to us via sensory input from our eyes, our ears, etc. But then regardless of, of how it gets to you, whether it comes in from the outside world or whether it comes from inside your, your brain, it still gets processed through the, the limited perception that we all have and by that I mean 
there's some things that we just can't or don't see. There's some things we can't or don't get, and there's other things that we do get. So I guess it's no different than dreaming, you know? When you're, when you're dreaming, you are hallucinating vividly, but dreams are real enough that you can wake up, like, scared out of your mind. And that didn't come from anything external. That was your own mind scaring the ever-loving shit out of you. Well, where'd that come from? Well, it came from inside your mind. It certainly seemed real enough, but it wasn't. You were just hallucinating. So I guess what I'm getting at is reality is sort of whatever we think it is. And I fully understand that I'm sitting in an Airbnb in a very uncomfortable chair, playing a video game, talking to all you fine people, And that's, uh, I'm going to pull in here and, yeah, 31 minutes, that's perfect. I'm going to pull in here and get fuel. And then we'll pick up from here next time. Beautiful. So what I'm saying is, I'm here with you good folks playing a video game. I'm only pretending to be a truck driver. But on some level, that's enough, you know? And, uh, and that, that weird boundary between reality and perception, I think, is getting more and more blurred as our ability to trick ourselves with media input improves. Yeah. Yeah, that was heavy enough. Right, we'll leave it, we'll leave it there for now. Folks, thanks for stopping back to check out the Portable Gamer. Thanks for joining us for another episode of American Truck Simulator. And we'll see you next time. Take care now.